that the bloodiest you've ever been in a fight? No, no, no it's not. I'm a bleeder. <laughs> so when, you, <laughs> so when you, you see the blood and you know you can bleed, does it bother you at all? No. Uh, actually, I think the worst time I bled was when I was training uh, at Dan Henderson's with Sean Strickland. Me and him were going at it. He was about 220 at the time. And uh, if you know anything about Sean, he likes to spar. And he, so we were going at it. He clipped my nose, uh, shattered my nose, basically. I, I was pouring all over my shirt, clothes. And, like, I didn't realize I broke my nose. I thought, like, oh, he hit my nose. I'm bleeding a little, whatever. And then I looked, I'm just drenched in blood. And I'm like, oh, uh. And for Sean to stop a fight, it's bad. Sean was like, "You, you ugly." <laughs> so that that's uh, that's that's maybe the worst that I could recall at the current moment. I feel like I know the answer to this, but did he apologize for breaking your nose? No. No, I didn't think so. But I wouldn't expect him to. If if you want to deal with Sean, you you get the whole Sean experience. It's like that, you know. You, uh, you guys hit each other with some bombs in there tonight. Were you, uh, were you surprised he was able to take your shots? No. I was not surprised that he could take a shot. I'm surprised that, you know, like my hands don't hurt as much as they do. Like, I told, I told people, I'm bringing the kitchen sink, and it's, the kitchen sink broke on his head. <laughs> like, damn, he got a block head. No offense, Tafa, but damn, you have a hard head. Does, does, he, uh, does he hit hard? Were you hurt at all during the fight? Uh, he hit, you know, he big too. Like he hit hard, but you know, I like he 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 hit like a heavyweight. You know, like I was expecting those bombs from him, so it was nothing I wasn't prepared for. And I mean, it's a bit of a cliche question, but when would you like to get back in there? Uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but you know, doctors and shit won't let me. Uh, Have so stitches? Have you had stitches? Yeah, I got, I think, three or four here, one or two here. It's nothing new. I mean, I've already had over 120 stitches in my face. Like, 125 now, but... <laughs> that sounds like a lot. I'm just a bleeder. Like, I cut open easily. You know, maybe because I skipped the emo phase in high school, it's shown up now. That could be it. Yeah. Emo was terrible, I thought. Ah. Uh, the music wise is pretty good, but I, I do lean more towards the golf side, but I, I do like my little pop punk with breakdowns every now and then. Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly's doing pop punk now. Yeah. You know what? I did not hate that. Uh, his last album. Uh, yeah. I thought it was really good. And Megan Fox liked it too, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as my coach likes to point out her thumbs, uh, but I don't know why. <laughs> I think they're very square, if I remember correctly. I, I don't know, but it bothers my coach a lot. And I'm like, dude, you're just mad that MGK got Megan Fox. I mean, if you're turning down Megan Fox for her thumbs, you've got really high standards. You know? Yeah, he, he might. Yeah. Or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. That Machine Gun Kelly Halsey track on that new album is, is fire. That's good stuff. Uh, my personal favorite is Jawbreaker uh, or... Uh, Jawbreaker was actually the one that caught my attention, uh, but I think the first single off of it was uh, My Best Friend's Girlfriend or Ex-Girlfriend or something with Black Bear. That one I have, uh, my daughter actually fell in love. I, I'm a big music junkie, so my daughter listens to it and she has a thing for Black Bear's, uh, Black Bear's voice and MGK, so I'm like, all right. I mean, she's four, so I mean, I'm not too worried about it, but still. <laughs> Do you ever find that there's a moment in a fight where, you know, being a music lover, that a song randomly will pop into your head? Have you ever had that where, you know, in a moment where you're just digging deep, where lyrics or something pops into your head out there? Not as much, but if, like, sparring sessions. If I'm listening to music while sparring, I'll, I'll fuck your day up easily. Uh, <laughs> actually, I almost came out to a song that literally said that like 20 times before the actual lyrics came in uh, from We Are The Flesh. And uh, yeah, no, like uh, I remember, I think I was sparring my boy Jamal and uh, Slaughter Prevail's uh, Demolitioner came on. Oh, that, that, that like, 
like I just went full like wow and then it just you know certain music just you know kicks it off for me and it, certain songs so it, it varies uh, from what I'm listening to when I'm listening to it and why I'm listening to it what, is there a moment out there when uh, well first going to the cut what was it that did I, I couldn't remember if I actually caught it was it an elbow do you remember when it actually happened was it an elbow was it just a, a, a regular I, strike I cut so I mean, it it could have been a breeze, you know, like like not not to disregard. I I just I bleed. Uh, so it could have been an elbow. It could have been a punch. I just know that I'm a bleeder. I'm a cutter. So I'm just like, eh, whatever. So when that happens and and you start feeling the blood, does that change the game plan? Does that put any sort of urgency where you? feel like, well, I got I to gotta take this out of a doctor's hands at some point. I got to try to finish this. Or do you just deal with the, the lumbering giant that was in front of you? A little bit of both, you know. Like, I don't want to sit there and just be like, oh, I'm bleeding. Attack Taffa. Because that would have been very stupid of me. He hit hard. And I don't want to just put my face out there for him to punch. So I had to make sure that, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm bleeding. But let's make my shots calculated and make them count. You know, if I could put them down, I'm putting them down. If not... You know, let's go. I was worried because I think it was the second to the third round, correct? Yeah. Uh, when I got the cut, yep. I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. I'm like, don't stop it, don't stop it. And he was like, all right, boom, boom, boom. You good? I'm like, yeah, we're going to fuck this day up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm winning this fight. And, yeah, so I just, I kind of have to, you know, because I've cut my under the eyebrow. So I, I just knew I was cut somewhere. And blood kind of goes up and around the injury. So I was like, I don't know where it is. I don't know. So it was one of those moments where I was like, mm, let's hope it's okay. And then once he said it was good, I'm like, all right, we're banging. Talk a little bit about game plan because it seemed like you definitely wasn't just like, I'm going to go out and throw hands. I mean, the commentary was talking a little bit about Toff. Everybody was saying he had great strike and he had good hands. But how you were, your hands look, were looking better it looked like every time he was trying to get forward and maybe, you know, size you up or try to strike, you were always hitting just before to kind of shut him down. Talk a little bit about what the game plan was for him coming in. Oh, uh, yeah, like me and my boy Jamal and our uh, Muay Thai master, Zach, you know, we're trying to get our Muay Thai mastery, mastery skills on. So going into that fight, we were like, yeah, we're on point on that. No, actually, the game plan was to take him down, uh, not to stand with him all three rounds. The game plan was to take him down and use my black belt, but he big. Like, yeah. that leg, big. Like, I was like, like, my coach is big, too. Like, he's 300 pounds, basically, of man meat, of muscle. And he big. Like, I was like, damn, this leg is heavy as shit. And I was like, well, I'm a little faster, I felt like. So I was like, touching him, touch him. I don't think I have the hardest shots, but I was like, if I could keep the pace up, keep touching him. You know, he's going to have to respect my hands uh, eventually. And I found my leg kicks were landing really well on him. So I was like, all right. And I knew he only threw two leg kicks. I checked both of them. I knew, I knew that was going to be a big part of my game plan, that was uh, check. Uh, ch I believe checking kicks is highly underrated in uh, MMA and, you know, something I bring into my game. I think the commentary even said something about that too. Like that they maybe thought that he hurt his leg a little bit after one of those kicks. Like he, he didn't go back to that well once he did it. Could you tell that after you had checked one of those that it maybe did hurt him? It didn't dawn on, dawn on me until after the fight. I'm like, oh, he, he stopped throwing that shit early. Uh, hell, I made my coach stop throwing it in the back. He was like, oh, yeah, we're going to practice. I check, like I was opening at my hip. And he was like, my foot, my foot, it's broken. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> And now he doesn't want to corner you again. <laughs> he, he likes me, I think. All right, and lastly, um, I guess what's the next step? Do you take some time to heal, or are you, are you the kind that wants to just get right back in the gym and get, get active again as soon as possible, or what's the next steps? Uh, so I'm a workaholic, so I want to fight, like, tomorrow, but realistically I'm going to try to take three weeks off. Uh, I do have uh, two businesses that, you know, I – my gym, I haven't really let it slide, but I want to put a lot of focus and attention to. I have a few amateurs that are finally getting their time to shine to to fight, so I want to be there for for them. Uh, I also have a candy machine business that I need to get back on top of, uh, and then I have my daughter. I have my unborn daughter that you know 
uh, I'm prepping for. So I got some things that are coming up, but you know, having this victory and you know, I love this fucking sport. So, and like I said, I won't, I won't fight anyone and everyone. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Andre Olowski and Ben Rothwell. I'm bringing him up too because you know, they, he fought tonight and Orlowski, that's some motherfucking pit bull right there. And I've been a fan since I was in high school. I would like to fight either of you guys. Um, if you guys are busy or taking your time off too, uh, I'll take whoever. I, I'm open. Uh, so, yeah. I think those would be incredible fights. Thank you very much. You're welcome.